Hans-Peter Borkhoff is a professor of banking at the University of Hornheim. Let's see what he thinks. Is the worst behind us or is it yet to come? I'm afraid we are not really across the hill now. Uh, we pushed the problem on and on to a higher level. Um, the highest level would be Eurobonds and we don't solve the problems and so we are still deep in trouble. Now investors have been shoveling their money out of equities and into more secure currencies or gold. If we take a look at the price, the precious metal had already been gaining in popularity prior to the crisis. But have a look at it now. It surged over the past year, hitting new records almost every other day over the past couple of weeks. If you haven't invested in gold already, have you missed the boat? I'd say you're too late now, but the point is gold is a very risky investment because you see the gold price is very volatile. Obviously, it reacts to the price. On the other hand, there are large stocks of gold in Earth, so some people can manipulate the price if they like. So there's no secure investment, especially not in gold. Okay, one thing that's secure is that German business has been booming. Is that going to stay secure, though? No, it's not. Obviously, the problem in the Eurozone will uh, shadow, sort of throw their shadow on the German business soon. And uh, so I'm afraid we won't have this growth anymore. I mean, we've been free riding on the weak Euro and uh, this comes to an end somewhere. What time frame, though? Economists say the chances of the real economy emerging unscathed are remote. Is it just a question of time then? I think it's just a question of time, obviously. And then in the end, we must come to an austerity course, which helps us out of the crisis in the long run. But we are still far from that. Well, you mentioned euro bonds. Is that the answer? It's a very wrong answer because it makes uh, irresponsibility as an organizing principle of Europe, and that's a disaster. It will, uh, well, give, give the merits to the people who made a uh, very bad budget policy and let the people pay who made a solid budget policy. But, but why? Why? Well, it's very easy. Everybody pays the same interest rate independently of what it did in the past. And the only thing which really can control the European governments are the markets. Mm -hmm. And we see contracts, uh, bilateral contracts between the countries, they simply don't work. There's nothing like a European state who can enforce contracts on these countries. But if, for example, the Greek decide to make a different thing than what they agreed on before, they simply do it. Mm -hmm. There's no force uh, in, in Europe to, to bring them uh, to the heel. And just briefly, politicians have been trying to calm the markets. Uh, are their efforts in vain? I think so. I mean, I mean they, they have got a very strange idea about the market, I've got the feeling. They, they don't understand it really and they mystify what the market does. The point is what they have to do is present solid budgets and then the markets will calm down by themselves. OK, stay right where you are. We're going to take a look at France now and then ask you a couple of questions about its prospects. It's fair to say the world's leading economies have been living well beyond their means. In the US, this has led to a credit downgrade and now it looks like France could be next in line. The rumours surfaced just as the country reported stagnant growth. France's debt stands at around 85% of gross domestic product. That's well above the EU's recommended 60%. Most French say they're worried about the direction their nation is heading in. Life in France could become a lot less lazy fare if the rating agencies decide to downgrade the country's credit rating. There are dark clouds hanging over the country's major banks. The share values of Société Générale and Banque Nationale du Paris have dropped as the rumors have increased. One reason for the problems is the fact that French banks are among Greece's biggest creditors. There have even been rumors that Société Générale might have to be nationalized. The banks are one major issue. But France has also long lived beyond its means. Luxembourg's debt, by comparison, is just 18% of its GDP. Finland's debt stands at 51% of GDP. Germany is much higher at 82%. And France higher still on 85% of GDP. Urgently needed reforms have been delayed, and the Sarkozy government is unwilling to raise taxes. Income tax is considerably lower than in Germany, and people retire at the age of 60, among the lowest in the European Union. One-third of the French national budget goes on wages for civil servants who often come out on strike when reforms are announced. France's debt problem is compounded by a lack of economic growth. The French economy grew by 1.5% last year compared to 3.6% in Germany. 
Even in the automotive industry, a traditionally strong economic sector in France, all is not well. France's market share has fallen in Europe, the United States and Asia. And the French Automobile Association expects sales to drop by another 10% this year. All three major rating agencies say they have no plans to downgrade France, but still, the speculation continues. Could France's fate be set to turn? Europe's debt crisis is the number one issue right now across the board. And how serious are those concerns? Could France be downgraded? Well, in short term, I don't think so. But in the medium term, any European country is in danger of be down, to be downgraded because we are just constructing solutions which don't work in the long run. And on the other hand, well, France is a great country, great industries, great products, but on the other hand, a real big backlog of reforms. They have to do a rather baroque social system and they should really do something about that. We're talking about a big economy though. What would the consequences be? Well, obviously, the, all this European safety net won't work anymore the very moment France starts to stumble. And then we see that all these programs we did for Greece and Portugal, all these things, they simply don't work. So what have the French done wrong? I think they should have made more reforms. They have, should have done mm -hmm. it more recently. I, I mean, Germany was leading in that even in the time of old Chancellor Schröder, and now we profit from these reforms. Mm -hmm. And they didn't do that. Is there anything other countries can do to learn from this? Obviously, can they can say, well, you learn to do reforms in time because you really mm -hmm. profit in crisis from them. And the other point is we need market pressure on all these countries. That's a very important point because otherwise they simply don't move because otherwise, well, that's all promote about the elector. Mm -hmm. you, don't, uh, you don't do bad things to electorate because you want to be elected. And that's a big problem of politicians still. Now, the head of the World Bank says boosting liquidity and hoping for global growth won't resolve America's and Europe's debt issues. He says they have to get back to the fundamentals. What's he talking well, about? Instead of fussing around with capital markets, you should just come back to solid budgeting and build up state budgets that really work in the long run. How come that hasn't happened? Well, very easy because uh, the capital markets allowed countries to uh, debt finance uh, to a degree which was really not healthy because they believed in all this bailout story. And now we must make them understand there is no bailout story. Instead, there's solid budgeting. Is that going to happen, though? It's nice to talk about the theory, the practicality of this. I think it must happen in the long run. The question is how big was the damage before it happens? Mm -hmm. Are we going to personally going to have to change our lives because of all of this? Depends again on the damage. We don't know how politicians will decide. I'm afraid it will change our life to some degree. Europe with this problem of euro bonds is going the wrong way now. The damage can be tremendous. Okay, Hans-Peter Borkov, thank you very much for coming My in. Pleasure.